Hello everyone, this is Ming Zhong. Welcome to today's market analysis for the S&P 500 E-Minis futures. That's for the session of the 3rd of June. In this video, I am going to show you the market recap on the last session, plus two trade reviews in the M3 timeframe, which I will cover the entry, exits, uh, the rationale behind, and together with the setup. And the first trade was based on a reaction test and a reversal. And the second trade was based on an effort versus result, but eventually become a losing trade. And going forward, I would also cover the bias, the key levels to pay attention to, and also the potential setup for the session later. So let's just get started. As we can see on this daily chart here, yesterday was a bullish day, and we have a breakout day here. We have a breakout of this swing high 3065 and that actually happened during the London session uh, regarding the volume is uh, we missing the previous day's volume but anyway I think it's slightly higher than the previous day's volume if I go to H12 um, yes if we compare this two days then we can see that yesterday volume was slightly higher but Overall, if we just uh, compare it to the past uh, past weeks, uh, this few days volumes here, you can see that the volume actually is considered on the low end. I think this is quite a constructive size. And because uh, I previously talked about this uh, area here is potential supply absorption area. And because of the decreasing of the spreads together with the volume, as we can see in this uh, H1 chart here. So if you recall, I talked about that uh, yes, in, a, in my video yesterday, that's a potential supply absorption because um, on this day here, we have a low volume day followed by a very tight range, narrow spread. So that's probably a sign just before the breakout to actually absorb the supply zone here, which I actually mark it up as you can see this uh, last hour bar here. So that's the whole supply zone and we can uh, assume that that's undergo the potential supply absorption before you actually break out. So the breakout actually happened um, around four or five o'clock my time during the London session and followed by a pullback but you can see that the pullback is actually quite shallow. Um, in my video yesterday, I talked about potential long entry, probably near uh, 3035 or even down to uh, 3010 if we can just uh, have a deeper pullback. But uh, it didn't really happen. So 3035 is actually quite a nice access line where the you can see the price actually respect the line very much, bouncing up and down, penetrate through uh, both uh, direction up and down. So it actually didn't also touch that 3035 level. So the only level it actually uh, tested was close to 3047, which actually tested um, uh, this breakout bar here at about four o'clock. So I still have uh, two trades to show you. Uh, let me get to M3 time frame. You can get a closer look and why I initiated two trades and why you actually uh, uh, have a losing trade as well. All right, so this is the M3 time frame. And the first trade is based on a setup of a reaction test followed by a reversal. So this is the US opening at about 9.30 my time. You can see that the reaction uh, is just this few candles, the three candles down, uh, followed by just a normal volume. And he actually just uh, tested this uh, leg up here. And that is the reaction. And this is the test as I mark it up here. So the first arrow here is the reaction. Second arrow is the test of this reaction, uh, which we have seen uh, the volume uh, has been decreasing and followed by a higher low. So at that time, I just anticipate 
uh, potential reversal bar, which it ha actually happened on uh, 948, 2148, my time. And that's where I actually entered a long uh, position where I just uh, put a stop slightly below the, the low here. And I just uh, exited and, or took my profits at the supply zone here. So as I mark it up, you can see here, this is the supply zone where the price actually started to fall. And I just uh, exited right there for about 50% of my position because I actually anticipate uh, further upside. So if I can just uh, hold on, then I will just hold on for more gains. But unfortunately, you can see what happened next. That's the bar where I uh, exit the rest of the positions, another 50%, because uh, this big bearish bar just uh, broke below the localized support. And I thought uh, that is the reversal. And it actually did become a reality. That's the reversal for the second uh, reaction here. But still not too bad. Um, for the first exit, I actually uh, have around 1.9 reward to risk. For the second exit, um, is I think it's around 0.9 or 1. So overall, the first trade uh, was still profitable. But you can see that I had another trade here. So why did I enter? So that is the uh, in the middle of the reaction. But uh, what I saw was actually, you can see that we have an increasing of the supply here, followed by um, decreasing of the spread here. If, if, you, if you just compare it, or let me zoom in a little bit. If you just compare these few bars here, we have seen the second bar here uh, in the middle here, uh, that's the volume. And the third bar here, we have actually increase of the volume, but the spread actually uh, become narrow. So what does it mean? It simply means that there is uh, some kind of the demand was in. So at that point, I just uh, anticipate a reversal bar and it did come. So that's where I enter the, uh, the long position here after the close of the, the bullish candle. And we have see this uh, small rally up, but it didn't really sustain. And what I noticed was actually we have a falling of the demand here, followed by a narrow spread, especially this last bar here. This is a really narrow spread and with a rejection tail. So that that is definitely uh, exhaustion of the demand and also uh, some supply kick in as shown up in this uh, rejection tail here. And I just want to wait for a confirmation, which is the next bar, and it's just uh, too late because you see that this big uh, big spread bearish bar, it just uh, took out my position. And well, it's almost. So I actually did get stopped out on the next bar here. As you can see, that's the, the tail here. So I just uh, exited there and there's the minus one R. But uh, I think overall still um, was a profitable day for me. So it wasn't that bad. Uh, if I were to encounter this kind of the situation, well, I, I will still take that. I think the only thing that I will classify this as not a A, a plus or A trade, uh, a great, great A trade was because um, it just uh, happened like in the middle of nowhere. Uh, wasn't in my uh, levels that I'm watching, but uh, still is a is a is a is a the trades that I will consider to trade in futures as well if I encounter a similar situation because uh, I think it's quite a valid trade. But anyway, um, that's the trade reviews, two trades reviews uh, for yesterday. So, uh, let's get back to uh, what's happening right now, currently. Uh, let me get to the slightly larger time frame H4. And what do we see here? I think um, so far nothing has changed because uh, we didn't really see anything uh, unusual or threatening because we have seen uh, some rally up here and also the volume slightly increased, but um, it's not that threatening. 
So I think we should be able to see uh, further upside targets where I think uh, this the good level here, 3130. Uh, if I just uh, use a daily time frame, you can see it clearly. So that is the swing high here uh, where we have an initial sell off followed by a small rally up here. So 3130 is a potential resistance level that I'm watching for the first target. And if we see, uh, if we didn't have any reaction from that resistance level, I think it's possible to go to uh, the next level, 3210, somewhere around there. So I think this is quite a nice level where I can see um, there is a bounce up here. And this is where the sell off begin once it's break down uh, from this level. So that is the second level. So if we just clear these two, then I think we are pretty much uh, very close to the, the all time high, 3004. And very much, I think we will just test that if we can just uh, commit above these two levels. So um, apart from that, uh, the bias for me for day trading is definitely up. Uh, for swing trading is still up. So both are up for me. For immediate key levels that I pay attention to, for the resistance level, as you can see, I have marked up the previous day high, day low, non-RTH high and low. But uh, one level that I pay attention to was actually uh, this last hour bar here. Um, so I am actually looking for possible pullback if it happens uh, to test this bar and uh, followed by a bounce up. If it happens and have a bounce up around this area here, 3065 or, or 70, somewhere around there, or even the day high levels at 3078. So I think that actually includes um, uh, the, the last hour. The, the last hour bar actually includes the, the day, day high here and also the non-RTH low here. So this is uh, where I'm paying attention to, maybe around 3065 or 70, somewhere around there. And I might just uh, look for entry and look for some reversal signs. And further down, I think we have uh, plenty of support levels, but um, um, 3035, I think is quite a nice level. Um, further down, I think it should be 2980. I think this is quite a important level to watch, but uh, I think it should be quite strong as well at the moment. 2980, 3035. So these are two levels that I'm watching. For the immediate resistance level, I think um, we should be able to see uh, 3130 as the first target. Um, yeah, so. And also the potential setup, um, I don't really have anything uh, for the uh, short entry or the, the short scenario, because as you can see, we are something like um, close to maybe two months, three months high. So I think I will just uh, only look for the um, long long entry. But this the this the way on uh, how I look at the current situation is bullish. And until we see uh, emergence of the supply, I think we'll just uh, still keep going up. All right, so that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it and get something out from it. If you find it useful and like it, just click like and also hover to my name or picture to also to follow me. And do remember to subscribe to my uh, channel so that you get instant notification of my future's videos. All right, and as usual, if you have any kind of the comments, uh, ideas to you want to share with me, or even some other uh, instrument you would like me to take a look, then feel free to comment it below. I will reply to you. And thanks for watching, and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.